So what robotic actuators are used in the K-Bot? By the end of this video, we will see exactly which actuators they use for the arms and leg joints. So K-Scale Labs came out with an open source robot called K-Bot recently, and this is perfect for people who want to get into humanoid robots and do things like reinforcement learning, do simulation and deploy it on hardware. They focus on having a hand right here that can be detachable with different hands. So in this video, I'm going to specifically go over the different actuators that they use for all of their arms and leg joints. Now, if you're new here, my name is Kevin. I've been doing robotics and AI for 10 plus years. and have a bunch of resources on my YouTube channel. For a lot of my robotic projects, I also plan to have memberships where my members get to see deep dive videos where I go into the coding and mechanical design. Go ahead and choose the tier that's right for you. So the actuators they use come from Robstride Dynamics. So they make planetary gears that are typically have gear ratios less than 10 to 1, which makes them perfect for robotic actuators because they're quasi direct drive, which means that the low gear ratio makes it easily back drivable. So personally, I haven't used them myself, but you could go ahead and check them out to see if they fit your application. So starting with the shoulder joint, this is the one that allows your arm to pivot back and forth. So it's the RS-03. It's going to be 20 Nm, 60 Nm peak at 180 RPM, 380 watts, a 9 to 1 gear ratio at 106 millimeters in diameter and 880 grams. So this next one here, this is the one that lets you pivot your arm back and forth. So this is the same motor that we just covered. And this next one, the RS-02, this is the one that lets you rotate your arm about this axis, like for example, twisting like this. So this is six Newton meter, the peak torque is 17 Newton meter, rated load speed of 360 RPM, rated power of 170 watts, gear ratio of 7.75 to one, and the size is 78.5 millimeters in diameter, weighing at 405 grams. This next one here, this is the elbow joint. It's also the same one. And we have the RS-00. Uh, so this one is five Newton meters, 14 Newton meter peak torque, 260 RPM, gear ratio of 10 to one, 57 millimeters in diameter and 310 grams. So you might be wondering why this is only a five degree of freedom robotic arm. So what ends up happening when you attach the robot hand, so the robot hand will have a degree of freedom this way and this way. So you have the pitch and yaw. So you'll get two more degrees of freedom once you attach the hand, making this actually a seven degree of freedom robotic arm. So this next one here, this is the, for the legs. We have the RS-04. This one is much bigger. It's at rated torque of 40 Newton meters, peak torque of 120 Newton meters. It runs at 167 RPM at 700 watts, 91 gear ratio with 120 millimeter diameter weighing at 1.4 kilograms. So this next joint is the O3, which we cover for the arm. And this next one here is also the O3 this is going to be the one that lets you pivot about this axis. And we have the RS-04 for the knee joint, which we cover for the top part. So you can see here the hips have the three joints that's all uh, in different directions. So it gives you your pitch, roll, and yaw for the hips. You have your knee joint here. And then this last one, this is for the ankle using the RS-02. So they have a mechanism here that lets your ankle pivot back and forth. Sometimes you'll see another motor here for the roll that will, or depending on what you want to call it, but it'll, it'll let you pivot your feet back and forth like this. So it's probably called the yaw here, or sometimes they'll use like a roll, they'll call it like the roll motor, but different papers will use different terminology. So you have a five DOF degree of freedom robotic leg here, but if you want the full uh, degree of freedom, you'll have the additional motor down here at the ankle to have that pivot and you'll have a six degree of freedom. But typically a five DOF leg should be enough for most applications. All right, if you found this video helpful, make sure to smash that subscribe button and check out my membership.